Actually, I'm going to try to record. We're recording. Nice. You All say right. you're going to record and you never record that. <laughs> it, it, it's recording. Hey, I reinstalled Windows. Things work now. Okay, this is all. This is all being recorded okay. right now. So sure. it's gonna be really sure. funny to start the podcast by saying this. But all right, here we go. Hey guys, welcome back. We are uh, starting 2019 with episode 14 of the Pixels Get Me podcast. Uh, we're still doing uh, gaming tech and new media news uh, we have some new guests planned for 2019 and some comebacks so uh if there's anyone you really want to hear back from again just hit me up on twitter and we'll uh we'll get them back on the show a uh, couple things uh we have pack south next week uh and i'm actually local to pack south so i'll be uh i'll be there all all weekend with a three-day pass uh trying to get the skinny on like everything that's coming um, everything that, uh, that's kind of in our wheelhouse, whether that be the grindy dungeon type games or just something new for Mixer. And, uh, a lot of Mixer guys are going down there. So it'll be kind of cool to meet some of the dudes that I've met over the last year, uh, while doing this. So it's pretty, pretty awesome. Um, PAX South is, is the reason in, in 2018, that's the reason why I even started streaming because I saw their booth and I was just like completely enchanted. So it's going to be kind of cool to, to have a different, a different lens on when I go back there. So uh with that, let's uh let's get into the podcast and get into the round table. So we have three guests with us tonight, a couple of regulars and one new guy. So we'll go new guy first. Hey Woodbox World, what's up, dude? Hey Pixels, it's uh, Woodbox World and uh I have been streaming for about a year and a half, two years now ish. Somewhere in there. It all blurs. <laughs> I also uh, have been known to run a Minecraft server on occasion and uh, am specifically familiar with technology and gaming in my uh, my skill set. So uh, I'm hoping to contribute a little bit more than serves any monster. I mean, uh, <clears throat> what? Uh, <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> so looking forward to being on the show. Awesome, man. It's good to have you. Yeah, the... Uh... I noticed um, it's kind of one of the things is the uh, the Minecraft server. So how long have you run in the Minecraft server before you were streaming? Like, what, was that just a side hobby or, or what? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've had a few. Uh, I had uh, one called Ender Mention, another one called uh, the uh, the Iron Guard, or Iron Golem, rather, and then uh, and then actually Woodbox World, which I, I've actually stopped those. Didn't have enough interest in them. People weren't really playing on them, so I, I stopped running them. But... Uh, uh, I've been doing that for since 2012 or something like that. Cool. cool. Um, a friend of mine's going to be starting up a new one here soon, so I'll uh, I'll drop the link in uh, in chat sometime when uh, when that's happening. He's uh, he's been a long standing uh, admin of Minecraft servers as well, so I'm sure it's going to be a good project. Cool, cool. Sounds good. Well, thanks so much for hanging out with us, dude. Uh, it was hard to we meant to have you on before the new year, and then like real life happened. So, uh, and then the holiday thing, and then now we're back. So thanks so much for making some time with us. I appreciate it. Definitely you. looking forward to it. All right. Uh, next up we got E monster 808. What's up, Emon? Hey, what's up, bud? Glad to be back again for another uh -huh. year. You know it. What you been playing lately, dude? Uh, just Path of Exile. Yeah. Like straight focus only. I, I hear you. So, <laughs> for good reasons, though. Experience. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into a couple articles to cover the why behind that. Um, but yeah, it's pretty pretty exceptional season so far, dude. You guys are crushing it. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually, this is probably the farthest I've actually pushed myself to go because normally I just stop carrying and have too much fun goofing off. Yeah. Um, I've only made five builds this league, not 20. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's... Uh... It's important to dial that back a little bit if you want to kind of hit like the end end game. But uh, well, but which which build are you going to be taking to the end? Do you know? Uh, I'm going to be taking the golem, um, the golem answer that I'm running currently. But uh, for me, it's never really about the end game. It's always about all the fun that I have making different builds. I actually enjoy doing random builds and stuff. Cool, cool. All right, Curbs, you here, dude? Yeah, what's up? 
That's that's all I get is a what's up. No, no, but you know, it is good from the scrub. Lord. You got a pro, you got a prob, prob for more, gas for more. What do you want? All what right, you Curtis, what you been playing lately, man? I've not been playing nothing, but I got something to talk about now because I was insulted go. during the interview, and I don't enjoy, I don't appreciate that. Yeah, I was gonna come out here talk about how nice his shirt is, and then he's gonna come, and then he's gonna come at me. <laughs> Talking about he has better opinions than me. You kid, are you kidding me? That's well, a nice no. shirt, though. It is I, mean, shirt. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. But no, this is my time to talk, so you should shut up. <laughs> now, uh, so wait, <laughs> you don't have your Iman. Uh, it's Curb's time to talk. Hey Pixels, it's my time to talk. Shut see, up. see, I said it now. Iman, out. what were you gonna say? So you don't have your uh, your intro anymore? No, I don't have my intro anymore, and I'm uh, sad. I'm still the king of chat not... because I have the strongest opinions in the podcast right now. So does that uh, make you the, the scrub lord of chat now? I was already a scrub lord. I just had a title. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> awesome. I'm glad we got that sorted. All right, well, welcome back, Curves. Awesome to have you, dude. I appreciate... I will do Scott Opera later, but that's not... Uh, you you heard it here, folks. We're going to be doing some ska opera later. Let's do this. Is it ska opera or just ska opera? I think if you said it's ska opera without any context, people wouldn't necessarily get what you were saying. Ah, so you so you clarify. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Let's uh, let's get into the news. Um, so we have nine articles with us today about seven uh gaming articles two tech articles nothing in the new media space um been binging some stuff on netflix or whatever but that's i'm not we're not going to talk about that tonight um let's talk about breach so breach is uh is coming to early access it's doing its last alpha test um by the time this goes live the alpha test would be going on it's Saturday and Sunday this weekend. Um, it's about a 24-hour test, or I'm sorry, a 48-hour test. Uh, so this is the last bit. Anyone who's ever asked for a alpha key, even people who go to Breach site right now and ask for an alpha key will be given an alpha key because they're going to absolutely break every server that they can possibly break with uh, just mass concurrent users is what they're going for. Um, they're also releasing a new class called the Exorcist, which has been on the menu but not playable. So I'm kind of excited about that. We'll we'll be playing that tomorrow on stream for a little bit at least. Um, and uh, and yeah, so after that, it goes into early access. Um, to get into early access, uh, you can get the pre-order, um, like the pre-order benefits, and you can get like a hero pack or a bad guy pack or both. Um, for anywhere from 25 to a hundred bucks, depending how much you want to splurge. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the game's shaping up pretty good. They're, they've done something like a hundred and some bug fixes that people have found throughout the alpha and a, a long list of, um, of quality of life stuff. So they're definitely pouring their heart and soul into the game. Um, they'll be at PAX South and, uh, I'm a Reddit mod for them. So I'll be able to hang out with them a little bit and get into, uh, Maybe get into some dev questions. Maybe get one of them onto the podcast at some point this year. That would be awesome. Um, with a official after early access launch looking like uh, summer. So, uh, so what do you guys think? Anyone want to talk? <laughs> uh, I'll uh, I'll start it off. So, so just. Uh, just from what I'm seeing on the article, and I, you know, I haven't looked into Breach a whole lot, but uh, uh, from what I'm seeing in the article, it, it, this kind of looks graphically a little bit like Overwatch. Uh, not not in gameplay, but in uh, in style. Uh, and then the just the is it like what is it like waves of enemies? Is that uh, like yeah, I, haven't, so, I haven't played it at all. So just a, a quick summary. It's like. Um, a dungeon crawler. Yeah, it's it's Overwatch, meaning you have a class and you're able to select skills. It's a little different. Um, you can kind of modify your class a little bit. Um, you go through seven rooms. The seventh room is, or seventh area, is a boss fight. So it's four players against one Veil Demon against the environment. So um, there's 
four good guys playing together. There's one bad guy, which can be player controlled, um, that kind of just throws traps and delays them. Um, kind of hmm. like evolve or, 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 you know, some, some other stuff where you have that four V one aspect. Um, you actually can't kill the veil demon. Um, as a good guy, he, you can only just kill the bad guys that he possesses or empowers. Um, which is a whole other thing too. Like if you possess a bad guy, he does a little bit more damage. He kind of glows, glows evil glow. And then, uh, you kind of try to stay away from him cause he could eviscerate you if you get, if you get, uh, you know, separated from the pack. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a really cool play style. A lot of, uh, a lot of possibilities. Um, cause it's still kind of in development, you know, like they can go a whole lot of different ways. Like even you know, I, I just equate it to uh, to Fortnite because Fortnite wasn't Fortnite, you know. Fortnite was save the world, and then it became what it is now. Um, so this early, it's it's kind of hard to tell what they're what they're gonna do with it. Um, I like the multi classing. So there's six different schools of magic for the for the classes. So right now it'll have uh, 18 characters at launch, but each one, as you level up the different characters, you can bring their abilities into the other guys. So you can have like this multi-classed, you know, shooter guy that shoots all sorts of different things from the other classes. So um, some cool build concepts, uh, a lot of stuff with gear. It's kind of Diablo-y with, uh, with looting and stuff like that. Um, but so yeah, it's got gear, it's, awesome. it's got like PvP, it's got uh, dungeon crawl. This sounds like yeah. the perfect thing for you guys. It's, just, you know, it's like uh, good graphics of like a mixture of everything you guys could want. Yeah, for your yeah. Uh, for your stuff. Yeah, it's one of the reasons why I pursued like I pursued them pretty hard on on just plugging into the community and and trying to get the the Reddit mod rights, which you know it comes with a certain responsibility and all that, but. Uh, but I think they've got they've got something special that uh, that other people are going to copy. I know for sure that um, Pagan Online, which is coming from uh, the uh, World of Tanks guys, what are they called? They're called uh, War. What what is the name of that company that does World of Tanks? Wargaming, yeah, Wargaming.net. Um, they're Games. coming out with Pagan Online, which sounds very similar to this. So just this idea just being spawned and launched since Gamescom is when they announced it, uh, which is August last year. People are already looking at it like, wow, that's something special. Let's try to try to copy it. So, um, yeah, it looks really promising. Hmm. And it's an alpha hey, at the moment, so it's a little clunky, but, um, but you know, they're working that stuff out pretty quick. Iman or Curb, do you guys, uh, what do you guys think about it? Is it, uh, <laughs> so I was gonna give my two cents and I saw your face on the screen and I was like you really want to talk about it so <laughs> now I'm not as necessarily hyped for this game as Pixels is I haven't been for the majority of the time I haven't played very much of it but what little I have it feels gameplay wise I agree with the notion of Overwatch but kind of like Overwatch and Smite had a love child. <laughs> and it's got the multi-classing, like he said, but it does fairly seem fairly limited overall. Again, haven't played very much, so I can't be sure. But um, it seems like it'll be fun, but I don't know how much time I'm honestly going to put into it because it's got loot, but it does not seem like the most diverse of loot. And that's, I mean, overall, not just exact, not really what I'm looking for overall. But I'll definitely try it with Pixels and everyone else. So, Iman, what you thinking, dude? Uh, I'll give it another try, but it was pretty rough the last time I tried it. So, okay, cool, cool. Um, yeah, it is an alpha, and honestly, like. When we look at yeah. something like Path of Exile, like six years later, what it's become, I mean, that's, it's pretty insane, yeah. you know, but it's just a matter of like seeing if they can find that right way to monetize the free to play model to get to the point where they can fund development so they can become something amazing a year, two years, four years down, instead of just being like another battle royale game, battle royale game that gets shut down, you know, cause it's like, oh, well, it only got 2% of market share. 
and Fortnite's still king. So we're going to close our studio now, which is like three or four different uh, battle royales that came out this year. So, and it's nice to see something coming out. Go ahead. If we're judging it on that, then they've already kind of made a rather bad mistake in terms of the starter packs and whatnot that you can pre-order because they're having you pay, honestly, what seems like the prices are not exactly the best, and then you don't even get access to play the game in the early access. It seems like a bad strategy to start your stuff out with for a game that, I mean, it's not the most unknown, but it's also, had I not heard about it from you, and I think a lot of people that have been to your stream, if they hadn't heard about it from you, they wouldn't have had a clue as to what this game is. Cool. So, I, so I heard one that I'm doing my job right, and two, <laughs> uh, I just want to correct something you said. Um, the people who pay with the pre-order bonuses get early access on Steam the day that it goes live on Steam, and yes, they get all um, the heroes that they pre-ordered. So, yes, the early access, but not the pre-alpha that we've been in for several months. Yeah, the pre-alpha is something different. Yes, correct. Yes, but that doesn't make sense to me. No, no, I'm, to I'm with you. Do that with the way they. Do. So yeah. I misspoke. Yeah, you're right. But I feel like they've already kind of failed in that. Department. Yeah, understood. Understood. Yeah, well, there's it, definitely a rift in the know, community for I sure. Played, I probably wouldn't have played it if you didn't uh, get, give me a key to begin with. So. Yeah, yeah. Understood. So I just uh, I just went on their site uh, while you guys were talking and uh, set up an account on there, and they actually by default have on the the account page. Uh, when you sign up on their site, they have the alpha key. So you don't have to like request one or anything like that. Yeah, it's just, just there. Just this weekend, so, just like starting just yesterday, this, yeah. they, they started doing that. They like just crushed the servers. Mm-hmm. Everyone yeah, come and play this weekend, you know? For months, it's been spotty as to who gets in when they get in. Yeah. It's been really kind of up in the air. Pixels has gotten several keys because of what, how hard he's been pursuing it. But there have been, I mean, I was on the waiting list and I, few other people in the chat were in the waiting list for months and still didn't even hear a thing about getting a key so it's like it's cool that they have it now again that they want to stress test the ter- servers but it, it wasn't like that for the majority of yeah and it, it, it was a good it was a good move on a couple things looking at what they're doing on the back end um testing out different things like it's kind of a bummer that it got announced at gamescom and then all the EU players like almost didn't even get into the alpha because they didn't they never launched EU servers until like two weeks ago. So they're yeah, like, well, shame. we don't want to we don't want to make you guys play with a her- terrible ping when really they just all wanted to play the game because they played the game for four minutes at Gamescom and were completely salivating, you know, and uh, <laughs> they knew what they were missing. You know, they had that that taste of free free stuff, you know. All right, let's uh, let's move on out of breach. So let's talk uh, let's talk Path of Exile for a couple things real quick. Um, I know we've been playing it a lot, uh, me, Emon, and Curbs, and probably Woodbox will start playing it because um, it's a decent game, man, and it's free. So why not, right? Right. Um, but yeah, so well, they sent this. I'll make another character and run with Woodbox. Yeah, see, absolutely, Woodbox will totally uh, will totally run with you if you need it. Um, that yeah, sounds so, good. So they have a uh, the new expansion, Betrayal. Um, which came out, it has a new record, set a new record for concurrent players on PoE, which is amazing. Um, part of that's probably the Diablo Immortal uh, backlash and everyone walking away from Diablo yeah. and jumping into PoE, which I don't blame them. Uh, the I'm, Diablo refugees? Yeah, <laughs> Diablo refugees. They have their own little channel and stuff in there. Um, but yeah, and then the... Uh, so that's really cool. I, I like seeing a game being more successful six years later than it was uh during its entire life of its uh since its inception it's pretty amazing just to see just to see that happen it just doesn't happen a lot it's kind of like an underdog story you know and i'm I'm a sucker for like the hallmark and the disney channel under under underdog stories you know but uh the other thing i want to talk about on poe and then we'll we'll get the we'll get the ideas from the uh from the table um so Zizaran, he's a he's a pretty big uh, Poe streamer over on Twitch. Uh, he ended up streaming the. the say that again. He called him the Blue Leprechaun. 
<laughs> he uh, he started streaming uh, the new season on Path of Exile, and he didn't stop. And he basically said, hey, this is going to be a 30-day stream. I'm going to play as much as I can. Kind of scheduled six or seven hour sleep breaks and just streamed. And he ended up breaking the Guinness Book World Records for uh, for streaming. Uh, final was it actually stand. confirmed though? Like yeah. just out of curiosity? Yeah, like, it's straight it... up confirmed. Oh, interesting. Okay, which is which is amazing. Um, but yeah, the current the previous record was from Giant Waffle, uh, which was set last month for four hundred and two hours, and he streamed for five hundred and five and a half. So, uh, so pretty cool. Um, and he completely is crushing the game. Like he's destroyed content with several builds now. Um, just, it's insane. To, I, don't, I don't know if you guys have tuned into his stream at all over the last 30 days, but it's, uh, it's cool to watch. I didn't know he was actually doing that already, but that was great. That's, I was actually kind of hoping he would like, I heard of it. I didn't see. I didn't know he was actually doing it. <laughs> it was really cool. So, so not only did, did he did he stream for thirty days, you know, and five hundred five hours, he also built the Path of Exile directory, you know, on Twitch because everyone's like, "Well, what is this?" You know, and then like they start seeing these huge numbers. He had like five thousand, whatever, ten thousand viewers, like pretty decent viewing for for Path of Exile. And then because uh, you put thirty day stream in your title, it's kind of a what? are you talking about type thing you know like yeah. a little bit of clickbait like are you serious like this is a 30 day stream i think i tuned into it on day six and i was like i don't know if he put the right thing on the title there's no way like that's not what he's doing no that's totally what he's doing and uh but he had devs he had the the grand gear games guys on a couple times you know doing some q a's with them and stuff and just overall like fantastic poe content and a lot of it's on like the poe streamer highlights say again was a lot of it him just playing or him just talking and playing? No, him just like hanging out and playing like a streamer, you know? Okay. Yeah, like playing like near constantly. Except for maybe okay. talking with, with the devs, you know? But he's probably even playing when he was talking to the devs, honestly. But but yeah, so that's cool. What do you guys think? I think uh, he definitely beat the record doing that. I don't think uh, Woodbox, when you asked if it's like full confirmed for the Guinness book. I don't, I'm pretty sure it was more of a spur of the moment thing. So it's not actually confirmed by them. Cause I'm pretty sure they need like a representative. there, pretty much watching the entire time to make sure what's happening. They've got the VODs dude. It's but recorded. They've got the VODs. Sure. But I don't think yeah, it's but... confirmed for right. that specific. I mean, there's ways around, there's ways to, to make the VODs look correct, but yeah, see, and that, that's why I asked is because I know that the way the Guinness works is when you're going to do something that you're going to, like, get a confirmed record, it's they have to have a representative present for the entire event. Yeah, that's one of their rules. Uh, yeah, and right, so... Tom. It might not uh, be the Guinness Book World Records. Jeez, guys. It's still a world record because I believe he can. <laughs> he should still do it. Like, he should still do it again. Yeah. And, Actually, get the get old book of records, man. I mean, he really should. I mean, <laughs> that representative would hate that because they'd have to pretty much stay like at his place the whole time. <laughs> Playing POE would be for is fun. Watching POE for five hundred hours. Eh. See, like my thing about Ziz is, is my thing about Ziz is, is okay. Like, I like Ziz as a streamer. He's he's great. He's fun. Uh, at first, I didn't really like this, but uh, he had a uh, he had a he had a quote that he said, and it was, "You may not like me now, but eventually you're gonna like me because when all your streamers are sleeping, I'm still here." <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's that's a wood box tactic. That's what that's what that is. That's straight out of wood boxes. Box like, I will still be streaming when they go to sleep. <laughs> I've been known to stream pretty late, yeah, not not that late, like like not that consistently late, but uh, <laughs> like yeah. I, I I have to work unfortunately, uh, yeah, so yeah. you Understood. know five five hundred hours is out of the question for me. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, my loot filter that I use has uh, a little uh, a tribute to uh, Ziz in there. Whatever, an exalted orb drops. <laughs> what does it say? Is it just him screaming or what? Oh. Uh, 
you'll have to see one day when you. Yeah, I'll have to it. see. I've not, I've not had an exalt actually drop, so it's a, it's okay, a really okay. rare drop. Just okay. let everyone know who's listening. It's like the one of the rarest possible drops in the game, uh, worth <laughs> a lot of money. Um, I got one given it's to me. Hundred dollar bill. $100 yeah, it's like a hundred dollar bill. bill. Um, but I've not seen one. I think everyone else has seen one. Iman's seen one. Curbs has seen a couple. I've had three or four. Yeah, I've, nice, I've found nice. three and was given one by Alpha. Cool, cool. But I found I found three and was given one by Alpha as well. But uh, yeah, Curbs nice. and I were both uh, doing uh, doing labs and we got one each. So that was kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> nothing well, you know, s- oh, go ahead, brother. Sorry, sorry to interrupt there, but I'm going to say this. I, I kind of pointed this out in the in the Here There Be Nerds stream uh, that I did the other day. Um, developers who put uh, as much effort into maintaining and improving a game that's had a rocky start are the developers that deserve the customers because totally. they realized that they put out a product that had problems and they spent the time to make the product so much better that it actually drew in a customer base that would vastly exceed what they had originally. And uh, a lot of companies won't spend the time to do that. They, I mean, especially free play, like where the, the initial investment from the customer isn't there. So they don't have like the, uh, the funds a lot of times to really build out the product now i'm assuming it's free it's i'm guessing freemium i'm guess uh, you know yeah. again i haven't played it in forever so you i'm just i'm assuming you can you can pay to win um uh, no well, not 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 pay to win. It's, 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 oh yeah, it's okay not, well that's not good freemium, on them you yeah, not freemium in that regard i thought you meant freemium like it, it, you can pay money and make things easier which i mean it does mm. kind of make things easier but it's not like you can just drop a Whoa. couple hundred and then slash people to pieces you know Easier in terms of convenience rather yeah, than Yeah, it's convenience stuff. More, more of the beats of having a sorted stash tab. <laughs> yeah, because you get a lot of stuff. Yeah. And you can look pretty. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anything that makes you guys look prettier is what's important, right? Like, we got we to gotta have that in there. <laughs> yes, everyone has proven that. You know, Overwatch loot crates have definitely proven that. Uh, skins for League of Legends have definitely proven that, like... Everyone loves looking the pretty. The thing I always liked about Path, though, like uh, Chris Wilson and the core core group of Path of Exile, the one that first they and they first created it, uh, they were Diablo gamers basically looking for a new Diablo since there wasn't one yeah, back then. Exactly. And, this, and then so Diablo three wasn't it? wasn't what they thought it was going to be either. So they're like, oh, God, thank God we made this game, you know, because <laughs> it's not yeah, like, it's not what Diablo was supposed to be. Much less Diablo 4, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, who knows what Diablo 4 is. Like, geez, I, I mean, even know. You, you were confirming it at the last BlizzCon. I, mean, I told so, you it wasn't going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Iman, you said before with the whole Diablo refugees coming over because of the mobile <laughs> game. Honestly, I don't think they're... Being a Diablo refugee myself, I don't think there are that many Diablo refugees to give them the numbers they got. Them. Actually, honest. actually, I've I've been like when I've made new characters or whatever, and I've been talking to like new players and people that are new to the game. There, a lot of them are coming from the Diablo uh, side. Sure, but I mean, there's 190,000 players coming on for this. I can't. Uh, I, I don't think. I don't think Diablo all of them. Refugee, I, don't I don't think, think all of them are, but I, I don't think they can make up even a sliver of that number. Honestly, oh, there's a good portion. I didn't say all of them, but yeah. well, let's let's be clear here. I mean, so there's there's a couple of factors with the the Diablo thing. One, there hasn't been a Diablo update. Well, like, this is this this world, right? No, yeah, well, they just... keep doing the season thing, and and that's not actually like the the value that people want. Like they want to have mm-hmm. a new a new title, right? They want to have Diablo Four. They want to have like you know some kind of new game. And if you sit on an IP like that, you're going to lose traction. I mean, I mean, let's be straight up. Let's look at Half Life. 
Yeah. I mean, there's a bajillion first person shooters out there and half life is just stagnant. Right. I mean, mm-hmm. but, and, and so all the people who played half life religiously and played multiplayer and did all that stuff, they're all moved on. Uh, yeah. Now, if, Valve were ever to actually come out with a new Half Life, they'd jump right back on it. But yeah, the in the is, meantime, if they're they, doing Half Life now, it's it's kind of gone and past the point when they could do. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, no. Let's be clear. Half Life has got, I would say, almost a religious uh, following at this point. Uh, oh, yeah. Where if they actually released a new title, it would be, you know, this huge landmark event, right? Uh, I know I personally would be very interested in a new Half Life. Um, I, would, I would definitely be there with you. So, well, yeah, I, I think so, a lot of people would be interested in it. But I, the backlash of the internet that finally a Half Life Three is announced or whatever, and then like, oh my gosh, like there was there was some article referencing it. Like this is like equivalent of like Half Life saying or Valve saying, "Hey, here's Half Life Three, and like. 10 years too late or whatever, like is what the, is what the <laughs> meme was. It's just like, ouch, you know, like seriously, it'd be, it'd be a meme. It'd be it's about 10 years too late. <laughs> you know yes. what they should do? Here's what I would suggest. Uh, and I'm sorry to get us off topic on this, no, but <laughs> um, what they should do is make half-life like a new half-life game and have it be VR only. Hmm. That well, would break the would internet. It would well think about it. I mean, you've got you've got VR rage. We're talking about VR is starting to come into its its potential. Um, you know, as you can see from the article that we were talking about earlier, um, like before the the cast. Um, you know, you've got the notoriety of Half Life. It would it would draw. It would be like uh, it'd be like Halo for the Xbox. It'd be a landmark title for a new platform. Um, and drive traffic to that, and uh, they're they're so invested in the VR now that that would be one way for them to push people in that direction, and and come out with a like a Half Life VR headset that maybe supports additional features like uh, you know crowbar uh, <laughs> haptic feedback or yeah, you know yeah, <laughs> like... totally so, uh, the VR the VR crowbar by Steam yeah, you know, yeah. it's like buy the controller today and it, like it as you swing it through the air if it hits anything it just like zzz, 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 yeah exactly zzz, yeah, exactly breaking exactly. crates That's... man nice <laughs> dude you got you got to write them this this is good oh no they say every time you mention half life to them it's going to extend the uh, the delay on the game for another year or whatever so yeah. that's the yeah, that's the running <laughs> joke with valve oh so. the running joke is they uh they just you know you're right they do just like run away from it i don't know why they didn't do it in the first place they should have the thing is is they realized they could make more money as a platform than as a game developer i, I really think that's that's where it is now and uh and then they got arrogant. Um, <laughs> yep. I mean, let, let's be honest. I mean, they, they are very arrogant in their business practices at this point, and they're not changing with the times. I mean, look at the design of the uh, uh, the user interface. They haven't changed, you know, like substantially changed in years. No. Yeah. Besides the friends list now that they decided to randomly change into yeah, that's something like, worse. <laughs> Yeah, that's, uh, you know, I mean, I'm not saying that they didn't need to improve that, but I, you know, it's, people. It's not the part that they needed to improve most. Yeah, people don't use it as a platform for communication anymore. It used to be useful for that, but it, I mean, it's not Facebook. Uh, I go on Steam to play games, and that's all there is to it. I've got the perfect way to sell Half Life 3, though. You ready? Yeah, all okay. right. You get a prominent booth at some game convention, and then you get like the best spot when they're announcing all the titles. And then, and then, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. You tell the fans that you're releasing a mobile game, mm. a mobile Half Life Three mobile. Yeah, <laughs> I hear that's the going thing these days. So yeah. uh, you it's know, like, I mean, best way to do it. 
<laughs> I mean, what do you want to do? Mobile, mobile's got like what? I it's mean, it's got the biggest player base in the world for yeah, games, I believe. So you know, he, here's the thing: mobile is great. Uh, you know, there are. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Somebody in chat just said, don't es- underestimate mobile. And that's very true. The installed base on mobile is tremendous. The problem is, is the capability of the devices. Until you can get something that is more powerful than um, your grandma's PC in your hands, then it- it's just it's not going to be a viable, full-on like platform for companies to produce quality AAA titles. You know, you yeah, you've got your Clash of Clans and you know, those are all the you know, they're money making. I'm not saying that they're not, but I'm saying that they're the that platform until the technology gets down to the point where it's ready to play actually place, for example, Skyrim even. <laughs> uh, yeah, we don't need another Skyrim though. <laughs> Well, that's just an example, you know. No, um, I'm just making a comment about that. I'm like, sure it's already in development. That's a, you know. Oh, man. <laughs> oh. So. Yeah, I'd agree with that, though. It's very accurate. The game, money-making, sure. Games, not where they need to be. Because I mean, of several limiting reasons. Some of them, yeah. Like, I can see, like, some of them. Like, uh, League of Legends would be fine on mobile, honestly, you know. Uh, it's, it's, like not mobile. it's not mobile in many it different a, ways. It takes a one core processor to run it at maximum everything. It's not. Uh, it's a bit bad. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Curves is not a big uh, MOBA fan. Well, I know Curves is not a MOBA fan, but you know. <laughs> well, and, and mobile, mobile games definitely have their place. Uh, you know, portability, uh, you know, I mean. I used to commute, um, uh, you know, for quite a while, like an hour each way, two hours each way. Sometimes I have to take the bus and stuff like that. And having mobile gaming and mobile, you know, hardware uh, like a laptop to to watch stuff. That's, that's the value is totally there. Um, the um, the but uh, again. Like, would I play those games at home? No. I'm going to sit at my computer and play games because my computer always provides the richest experience. And uh, so... With, you know. What's that? Say, say that again, Ima? Also, more com- it's more comfortable. I mean... Right. Where, mm. it's like, my problem with the phone is, like, I have huge hands, dude. <laughs> yeah, phones are like, getting bigger and bigger, though, dude. I I have a Google Pixel 2 XL, and even that's still too small for my hand. <laughs> yep. Like I, I just get uh, hand cramps when I play, but I still play because like I have an hour lunch. Uh, if I'm not watching random people on Mixer, I'm you know playing some game on my phone. <laughs> I think if they can get like the Google game streaming, whatever it was they were doing, like how they had with Assassin's yeah. Creed Odyssey, I believe it was working and slightly more powerful phones, like uh, Woodbox said, stronger than your grandma's computer. I think that honestly could work well as with as a combination and bring a shift, but it's just not at that. Point. Well, and, and the controls are. Uh, yeah, the, <laughs> you've seen some some comments there in chat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah. uh, the, the controls on a mobile device are also terrible. Plus, you know, I mean, if yeah. you if you add peripherals to make it, you know, so it has extensibility, then it makes it bulky and, and inconvenient to carry. Um, it also drains the battery, so you have less playtime. Mm-hmm. Very true. Yeah, that's a that's a great. And then you have to plug it in while you're can deal with that. And so there, there's all kinds of factors there that are that are limiting right now. That maybe in the future might improve. I don't know if you have you guys seen this stuff about these new uh, gaming streaming platforms where you reserve like you get a a dedicated server that streams yeah, games to you. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, we've talked about them on several different episodes, like four, like five, Shadow seven, and ten. Whatever. Yeah, all I, of them. Um, I actually, yeah, I actually did do the trial, for, or I did do the one run try for uh, Shadow. Shadow. Yeah. How did that work out for you? Uh, it was great. Um, except. 
not going to play any first person shooters on it. That's for sure. <laughs> See, and that's yeah. It's it's not yet where it needs to be. I think, I, I, and I don't think maybe the services where it needs to be, but our internet infrastructure and the affordability of a connection that's good enough for that is not where it needs to be. Yeah, it was well, just, I mean, go ahead. not doing a first person shooter was 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 fine. Like it was really, it was actually really good. Like doing mm-hmm. a solo game, perfectly fine. As soon as you do like a first person shooter multiplayer type, totally not fine. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Just just uh, yesterday or the day before yesterday, I was playing uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey through Project Stream. Just like yeah. again, just to experience that, and it is amazingly smooth. Like yeah, it is. I, I was I was just completely floored. But um, it's cool to see what's possible in 2018, 19 with the internet, you know, and it's only going to get better. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's move on to Destiny, guys. You guys mind doing that? Because I'm not a big Destiny guy, but I need you guys to. Uh, to tell me we'll how take important it. We'll this take stuff it from is. Here, Pixels. It's fine. Okay, I'm going to read the articles <laughs> and then you guys can take it from there, okay? So then chat knows what the heck we're talking about. <laughs> Ready? Sure. All right, so so there's a uh, there was a puzzle that uh was in Destiny 2 that I guess was pretty difficult and uh people couldn't figure it out. And then Bungie's like, "All right, all right, fine. I guess oh, uh fixing the puzzle um yeah that's that's next swa very good um but the uh i guess the puzzle was too hard but it would unlock the next bit of content so everyone was trying to figure it out working together in the communities or whatever and it was just still too hard so uh that's that happened and then they opened it up to say okay cool we didn't want to keep our content behind a, a iq wall and then the other thing is uh bungie splitting with activision um, and then also keeping Destiny in the process. Uh, very similar to 10 years ago when they split from Microsoft um, and started doing their own thing. So they're kind of repeating their repeating their self a little bit there. But, um, but yeah, it, this makes me speculate that we might see Destiny not on the battle.net launcher and then maybe somewhere else, you know, since they're going to go back to publishing their own stuff. But... Uh, that's the only opinion I have on it, but I really want to hear what you guys think about the whole Destiny thing. I don't think Destiny's going to leave the Battle.net launcher. Uh, I mean, it's possible, but I think they get enough out of have being on that launcher that it wouldn't make sense for them to switch. I also think that they really don't need whatsoever to perm- solve that puzzle for people. Because that's just catering to the random people who try to solve it and get that's nothing just, out. That's I, just self helplessness, man. People who play Destiny are not dumb people. They've solved raid after raid in the past. It, just give it time, and you'll get a solution for it. That if you can't actually solve the puzzle yourself, you'll you, you'll you'll find a way. You'll get a way to solve it. They, I, I don't think they need to go to this extent. Yeah, like it would have happened nonetheless. Like regardless, like it would have it would have happened, and everybody would have shared it. So it's not like it's a big deal. Get some of the Destiny One players who first timed the raid in a few hours, and have them try to solve it. I don't think it would go as poorly as it has with the brand new Destiny Two players. I guess so. Looking at uh, at the information here, and uh, so I I play. A lot of Destiny with my father. Actually, he's a he's a hardcore Destiny player. Um, uh, retired, plays five hours a day to do all his dailies and all that. Um, <laughs> the uh, um, the thing that I saw one is that this was a tremendous grind um, to be able to get <laughs> to the point where you can even do the challenges and. Uh, so and even at that point like uh even when you were like at the level they recommended for the first like forge unlock it would still like just destroy you um and uh plus you you had to be with other players 
because uh, I think it was kind of a strike sort of format where you were uh, you were playing alongside other players, and of course there's you know sometimes people would have two people, so they'd have a third, and nobody'd know what each other was doing. Nobody communicates in Destiny unless you're you know playing with your friends. I've noticed. Um, I think that's a problem. Though. That's true. Yeah, and so it it uh, it becomes like a, a pickup group thing, and you like you just end up not being able to finish the challenges. Um, as for these guys that tried for 27 hours and all that stuff, I mean, more power to them, but, um, it, it's possible that Bungie and an Activision came up with a puzzle that they thought was brilliant and that it would be solved within a certain timeline that they had a goal for, um, kind of the completion and the movement towards their next marketing stage. And when it didn't happen... And their community was kind of rising up in arms, especially the, uh, um, the I guess the softcore sort of players, the the casuals. Um, <laughs> that they they just got frustrated and were just like, yeah, you know what, you'll figure it out. Whoever gets it first will invite up to the Stargate program, and uh, we'll we'll call it good. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you guys recall the. Uh, what, what was the last Stargate series? Uh, was it continue? Not continuum. It was uh, well, maybe uh, Stargate Universe. They had Stargate. Yeah, Atlantis. Universe. Yeah, universe had, had the guy had the puzzle. Yeah, yeah, it had a puzzle right at the start. The guy solved, and they yeah. So you're hired. Obscure, yeah. obscure reference. Uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but yeah, so. I mean, I, I just I think they wimped out and they decided to just let it go, and and the, the puzzle was probably just like too obscure for people to really get within their timelines. Well, it's probably also because a lot of people now they just want it to be done and not even actually put the time in it. Right. They would have put a, if they would have put oh you can pay two bucks and just have the puzzle solved. They would have everybody would have paid for it because nobody wants to do it because everybody's just lazy now. Yeah, I mm. think I put a. Fair, I mean, I've put a fair amount of time to Destiny 1 and 2, but Destiny 2, I've got all my characters up to max level for, you know, one when I originally released to the third DLC, which, I mean, the first and second DLCs really weren't worth the buy. But um, it was obscenely easy to get anything you wanted. And I haven't put an insane amount of time into the newest... The, one but it's more difficult i don't see a problem with that the only thing you had to do beforehand in destiny 2 was run around and not be completely blind and you would win the game <laughs> unfortunately nice. that's that's about the difficulty level unless you went into the uh trial of the nine or uh, and which at which point you would get sweaty sniper player teams that just use any it's not important yeah it's i don't think a difficulty raise is a problem they just lost something that they fixed since people were complaining about it it's a step in the wrong direction i don't know I don't know. I haven't. I haven't even played Destiny Two yet. I have it. I just haven't even played it because it's. I'm just not even interested right now. Apparently, it's worth it after the new DLC, but I yeah, put yeah. not a ton of time into the new one. I mean, the 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 characters in the storyline are definitely decent. Uh, I, I was. Uh, well, I don't want to spoil things, but uh, uh, there there are certain points in the storyline where you're like, "What they did that?" You know, kind of thing. But. Uh, uh, you're talking Destiny uh, would, 2? Yeah, Des in okay. Destiny 2, yeah. Um, but I would recommend, I mean, if, if, if on the single-player side, because I, I don't I haven't spent a lot of time in the uh, the multiplayer side of things, um, but on, on the single-player side, I would recommend going through the story and, and kind of enjoying that. Um, I don't, don't like stories. Well, <laughs> well not a bad know. story. Um, <laughs> honestly, if you need people to play with, I would be willing to, but you can also join the Destiny Discords. I've found so many people that are actually willing to play and understand what they're doing and not complete 
No, I can't say that on this. But yeah. anyway, right. there are decent enough people to play with on that that actually work well. So you could use that if you wanted to. Well, and, and again, anytime I want to play, my my father will jump right on and. Uh... <laughs> Oh, for me, it's not even wanting to play or not. It's just I just don't have the the interest right now, even though I have it. Well, and admittedly, the time investment that you have to put into this game to play it uh, and finish the quests regularly and all that stuff is, is pretty sizable. Uh, yep. You know, if you were to do every planet every day, all the quests, it's it's substantial. Like you just have to like. See, the know, best uh, thing that bugs me is like. I don't like dailies. I don't like it's, mm -hmm. it's a waste of time, you know. <laughs> can you uh like, curbs, can you compare it to Warframe on unlocks and everything? Like what do you what do you think like story wise, uh planet unlocks, content, you know, like what's more of a grind, Warframe or Destiny? Uh I mean Warframe's more of a grind story, I would say overall just product quality wise is better in uh destiny um uh, just as i mean you don't play warframe for the story but um i think grind wise destiny i'm told it's harder now and that it's a lot more since the uh since the new dlc released but when when you started playing when on first release you got to about 160 or 170, and then you hit about a 10 level white light wall, which is the most difficult portion. And then once you got to 185, it was just smooth sailing again. And yes. you didn't actually have any issues getting to 302. Overall, the, I don't know how many more dailies there are now, but with how me and my group were running things before, it would take us to get through both regular and prestige raid maybe an hour and the rest took like maybe 10 minutes a piece depending on which one it is if it was like pvp or whatever just for map time or game time but i'm hoping it's more of a grind it's it's really at least before this newest dlc it wasn't really a grind game i mean honestly gotcha and there's no specific there's is now but there were no specific loot drops that you really needed there wasn't any different stats or things you could work in except for masterworks and masterworks had no real effect on your weapons unfortunately as long as on callus you for shooting the skulls you had something over 300 rpm it didn't matter honestly but yeah it really wasn't a grind game before this new one, I, I suppose, would be the best way to put it. Warframe's a hundred times more of a grind game than Destiny 2 is or was, whichever you'd like to put it as. Yeah. But the thing, the difference, I think, uh, I don't know about Destiny, but the difference for Warframe especially is I don't have to do the daily quests. I can just do whatever I want and still get to the, to the point where, you know, you guys are if you do all the grinds. Well, then I yeah. guess that depends on what type of game you want to play. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you if you want to play a grind game, then that's one thing. Uh, you know, if you want to play a just straight PvP, um, you know, kind of action game, then that's another thing, right? And yeah. Destiny has both, I believe. I, like, I haven't played the PvP that much again, but uh, I've done strikes and I've done, you know, a few rounds of the, uh, oh, what's it called, where you get the, the points and you... Uh, the, the, the cauldron or whatever it is, where you're. Uh... It's the new thing that was released, right? Where you're player v yeah. player, and you put in the cauldron, things spawn. Mm -hmm. They can. Is it the black yeah. cauldron or something like that? No, I no. I I, 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 don't, I don't remember the name of it, but it's it, it's uh, so you're what it is is you it's player versus environment where you're playing against enemy mobs that are spawned, and then you when you kill the mobs, you get points that you put into the central column, and when you when you get the points, uh, you're building up to this point where you get this big giant Gambit. bad guy. Uh, no, Gambit. Yeah, Gambit. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, and uh, so when you um, when you put the points in, if you put a certain amount of points in, it actually sends enemies to this opposing team. Uh, 
and prevents them from gathering their points. Um, it's actually, I actually really enjoy it. I, I think it's a great new style of PvP, basically, even though it's PvE in some ways. Um, it has its frustrations, as with any PvE slash PE environment, but um, I think it's a good a good addition to the, the game, um, especially if you don't like to actually PvP on a consistent, consistent basis. I enjoyed my time playing Destiny 2 with my buddies, like, a lot. I thought it had really good potential. It just, before things like Gambit and the new open world raid, I guess, that they've put in, and the new systems that actually make it a bit of a challenge, there wasn't really much to do, so you just had to migrate away, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I'm more than down to get back into it. I just haven't had the chance to. I... I think it's probably a lot more solid of a game now. Yeah, I, I would say they've improved it with the, the additional modes and everything. It's, but we should move on before Pixels Podcast becomes Pixels Broadcast with the the, the link. No, you, you guys are good. <laughs> like, like I, I needed I needed you guys to talk uh, to talk Destiny. I've, I've done this a couple of times now just to keep up with Destiny news, but not not playing Destiny at all. I mean, I own it, um, but that's about the extent of it. I I'm mean, still willing to carry you up oh, in it, brother. Okay. One day. Oh, no, I, I hear you. I, hear you. I think, you know what I mean? We no, you and me. Yeah, <laughs> it's one It's one of my favorite things to see on Twitter. Like, uh, just to see people, like, hit milestones of light levels and how hyped they are about it and just like, hundreds of likes or thousands of likes or whatever, depending who you're looking at on Twitter. And then like this this uh, weapon, I don't know what the name of this weapon is, but I just saw this on Twitter um, a couple of days ago. Someone's like, "All right, hashtag goals or whatever," and like they ha- finally had this weapon, this this one that's on the screen right now. It looks like it looks like a sword to me, but it's still a gun. You know, I don't know. It's it's something specific that's really important, mm-hmm. I guess. But it's like that's so cool. I just like the the romance of all these people falling in love with this game, and I'm like totally cool. It just watching that you know <laughs> and not necessarily playing it i just you know that's well how, i'll say that's this, where i'm at on it the gunblade is not a new new invention but uh that's a whole other conversation right <laughs> so are we talking like final fantasy 8 squall gunblade or are we talking right like, well i mean that's what? basically what you're looking at there in that screenshot is a gunblade yeah. uh, you know yeah. so <laughs> i mean it looks cool <laughs> but uh but yeah that's that's basically what what you got there the right, previous cool. so, most difficult weapon to get was the raid shotgun, which you had to do uh, several regular raids, pre- multiple pre-quests in between, then prestige raids and blah, blah, blah. But that was the about it, the extent of the difficulty in grinding before the new updates. Hmm. Cool, cool. All right, so out of the... Uh... On the next four articles, just for the sake of time, like I don't know if we're gonna go through all of them, so we'll I'll just hit the headlines and you guys let me know what we want to come back to. Cool. We don't we don't necessarily have to come back to any of them. Um, We have the uh, next gen Xbox, codenamed Anaconda, uh, possibly coming (laughs) coming out in 2020, uh, which would be after the PlayStation 5. Um, But anyway. Uh, and then we have the, uh, this is a cool article from uh, December 18th last year, but uh, it talks about the best video game surprises of 2018. Um, just a couple of highlights there of different things that I thought were kind of interesting. Um, and then we have a, for the tech tech side, so outside of game news, um, but still, you know, game related. Uh, we have the HTC uh, announced uh, Vive Cosmos, which is a... Uh, an inside out tracking instead of the typical Vive uh, lighthouse tracking. So you can kind of just pop this in anything. They even have it. Uh, I think I saw it had smartphone capability that they're throwing in this too. So like you don't need a PC either, which I mean, the faster we go from inside out tracking, the better. Um, but it just, the, the hardware needs to be there, you know? Um, and then the uh, 5G fake out that AT&T has been doing to customers where they're throwing a uh, a nice little over the air software patch that says that now their phones are running on 5GE which is um, a complete lie. So uh, so I don't know if there's anything that jumps out to you guys. 
Let me know. I want to hear we'll... the uh, best games out of 2018. <laughs> okay, and uh, yeah, let's let's look at that real quick. Good pick, Iman. All right, so uh, some big surprises. They have uh, this is a Kotaku article. They write it every year, so they've had it ever since 2012. Um, and then they also have uh, another article that they come out with that's the biggest disappointments of 2018. Um, mm -hmm. so, so a couple things, I'm just going to flash through them and then we can kind of talk about whichever ones, but, um, but feel free to cut me off if there's something that's like really jumping out at you guys. Uh, so shadow of the tomb Raider ships with the wrong ending. Um, uh, Bowsette, that whole meme happened. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the, uh, game developers are starting to talk about unions. There was a lot of look at uh, red dead redemption two and, uh, and all the crazy hundred hour work weeks and uh, the crunch that is the game industry. Um, no that oh, go ahead. Support. I said it's good that they're gonna get something to support them now because you know they don't really get all the credit they should. <laughs> yeah, even the yeah. the the VFX industry in Hollywood is like completely not at all what it used to be. Like there's there's like documentaries on it now and and podcasts on it about how absolutely broken people will spend you know hundreds of hours on a on a commercial or whatever and get paid like pennies which is uh, a whole whole other topic another day i guess um but yeah unions unions could help that um no man's sky getting real actual multiplayer something that uh <laughs> that was advertised in the beginning and then it, it wasn't really and now it is really um, the, def the, de the Detective Pikachu movie looks really awesome, and I, I agree with that uh, that statement. Uh, it's going to be exciting. Uh, Ridley finally getting into Smash Bros. Uh, the Xbox Game Pass now finally getting uh, first-party games free on day one, which is pretty cool. Uh, Fortnite rising to be an international phenomenon. Goodness. And uh, <sighs> Sony for the first time ever doing PlayStation 4 crossplay. With other consoles and PSN name changes, but I think that's About it for. It. Oh, and then I, and then we've talked about this. Yeah, one one last one. We've talked about this several times on the podcast. But uh, Steam competition um, growing. So, anything jumping out, guys? I'm surprised that Sony is willing to give uh, give up their supremacy. Well, to it's actually do. Because if, if all the other consoles are doing it, everything else is doing it, they're just going to get left behind. Dude. They're going to be, they're going to sit there and be as stubborn as Steam is. Because what's going to happen to Steam? <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and um, Sony, Sony is very stubborn, like when it comes to things and, and, and maintaining their exclusivity. I mean, uh, even more so than certain other companies. Um, so, uh, but. I mean, if you look at the problems like with Fallout 76, where theoretically the theoretically the reason that they didn't support crossplay was because of Sony, um, and then Sony dropped out of E3 this year. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. If, were you guys aware of that? Like the yeah. whole thing with that. So yeah. I mean, when, well, they, a, have when they, own, they have their own convention where they announce stuff now, you know. Uh, that's yeah, yeah. you know <laughs> that's pretty much worthless uh you know i'm just saying like the uh the thing with uh the thing with a major game developer and a major game platform dropping out of the most important event for gaming companies in existence right now is huge yeah, but it just shows that it's not that important. That's that's the card that they're playing, man. That, that's the card that they want to play. <laughs> no, that's the card that they're playing. They're, they're, they're not only saying it, they're backing it up with action. Yeah, unfortunately, Xbox hasn't really been giving Sony, or Microsoft, I guess, hasn't been really been giving Sony very much of a competitor with the last several consoles that have been released they've kind of been winning and dominating the console war for a while now and it's, they're not i think them doing this is them trying to show that they have the ability to do it more than anything else but yeah 
Hey, the thing is, is that uh, sorry, you monster, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So the thing is that when you talk about customer awareness, okay, like user base awareness of new titles, E3 is the time that everybody actually pays attention. Okay. Um, Like uh, people will go on IGN and they'll have the feed up, you know, like the, the, the real time feed of the announcements and everything for all the major, um, uh, you know, press conferences and all that stuff. And they'll go on there and they'll actually watch it. Like, while they're working, they'll pay attention. You know, they'll, uh, they'll actually focus on it. And, um, I don't see, unless Sony does something like completely off the charts and brings it to this. So like, I mean, I'm, I'm specifically familiar with the gaming industry and I wasn't even aware that Sony was planning on doing their own convention or doing their own thing, right? So uh, if they think that that's going to be the new E3. <laughs> no, no, yeah. No. Well, it's not that they're like saying the, that. Their new E3 of awareness, I don't think that's going to work out for them. I think the goal is more of to set themselves apart. Yes. Well, rather than make wow. it into the new e Yes, yeah, they're, they're going to set more. themselves apart, all right. <laughs> there's two I, I different. Don't, no, I don't necessarily think it was a good strategy, but it, it is a strategy. Oh, look at the dogo. Yes, this is uh, first. Sorry, real quick. This is first stream reveal of uh, puppy. I guess she's running <laughs> around at one oh. in the morning. It's all good. Big it's man, good. little puppy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, if I can say something real quick, um, so it's so funny, you know, that like the industry, they think that uh, she's just like chomping on a sock here. Um, <laughs> the uh, the gaming industry thinking that E3 is still as big as it as it is, you know, like with Twitter and with uh Facebook and with YouTube, um, you don't need a convention to make an announcement. You need a hashtag and then it trends and then everyone in the world freaking knows about it and they might know that the hashtag E3 and then they check that hashtag to see the big news that came out. But like if you are either the top dog or someone who's not going to be the top dog, it is in your best interest to not be at this convention, you know, like you can set like curbs just said you could set yourself apart still like you can play your own music like how many times you know uh, every e3 who won e3 and then it's like okay well if you didn't win then toss all the games you just announced out the window like why were you even there bro and it's like oh my god dude there was like 10 titles that were like really decent games i'm looking forward to and they lost it's like oh they lost. And it's just, it's not, not healthy, you know? It's not a good thing. Well, the, the thing is, too, like, about E3, it's it's just became more of a, who's got the biggest show, and that's it. And then it's it's not yeah. even, like, like, whoever wins is not even based on actual quality of product. It's just based on quality of a bunch of other people saying that they are better, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, it's not like what it used to be. Like, I used to watch the E3 every year back in the day, and then I just stopped caring because it was like it's a bunch of crap. <laughs> See, that's a, that's another thing. Like, I really like um, I really like uh, Gamescom. So when I was over in Europe... Yeah. I was over in Europe, and we were, we were going to Gamescom every year, and, you know, their whole slogan is, you know, power to the players. Because E3 was a press event. Gamescom had you know, five times as many people and you actually got to play everything. You just stand in a six hour line, but you got to play everything. I I played Kingdom Hearts like a year and a half before it was in a store, you know, like it's like, oh my gosh, this is unbelievable. You know, and you're not press, you know, what was that anyone? You got to play it before it was actually in the stores, man, before it was actually a thing. No, like you play it announce day. Like, hey, like, hey, by the way, we're coming out with this new uh, civilization game. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, it's playable right here. And you're like, I'm sorry, what? A new Civ game? And you just stand in line and you play it? Like, and, and Press is standing in line with you, trying to play it, to break a story. You know, it's like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. 
But yeah. so that, I'm I'm more of a fan of that now. That that social, like what what PAX is doing, and PAX is way smaller than Gamescom. Um, that the community of gaming rather than a press event to watch stock tickers go up or down the the next morning. Like, come on, you know, that's not what this is about. I know that's what it's about, but it's not what it's about for fans. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, Sony doesn't need E3. No, uh-huh. they don't. Microsoft doesn't, Microsoft doesn't either. Nintendo yeah, doesn't. So I guess you know. Here, here's the question: What does Sony need right now? Um, they need to learn to work with everybody else because that's the way the future. <laughs> I think them separating themselves. The, I don't think it's about what they need. I think it's about what steps they could potentially take because there's not anything specific besides progress that they specifically need which everyone needs so i think setting themselves apart is probably one of the only things that, can... that I mean, again i'm not inside the industries per se so yeah. in my I opinion mean, what... e3 just seems like it's a it's a it's a it's a point where everybody has to have something to say about something or you know you don't you don't have a time you don't get to casually just do what you got to do you have to have like something ready for E3 every time. Yeah, and then they rush and, things, you know. Doesn't work, work good for gaming, you know, like yeah. to rush to be ready for E3. Who cares? <laughs> I mean, personally, as a gamer, I'd rather have a quality game that wasn't shown at E3, like you know, <laughs> than something that was shown at E3 that was just rushed. All right, Woodbox, we got all our thoughts out. What do you think, man? You want to you want to wrap it up? Um, not, uh, you know, I, I mean, there's, there's a ton of stuff in this article that, that was interesting. Um, I think game developers definitely have their work cut out for them in more ways than one to, uh, to improve their, their plight in life. Um, part of the problem is just the nature of their work. Um, you know, it, it First of all, a lot of times the developers are even temporary, like they'll be on contract for a particular game. And yep. then at the end of that contract, they're done. They're just let go. Um, yep. So, I mean, there's, oh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's a rough environment. And, uh, and let's be honest, their, their work is in some ways artistic. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I know it's, it's science and things like that but when it comes down to the nature of their product um you can't tell me that rockstar or or not rockstar but like red dead redemption for example is not a artistic endeavor when they're developing it Mm -hmm. uh you know the style the characters the story the you know just the whole uh product is is a work of art uh so that's uh that, that's definitely a challenge that they'll have to face to establish any kind of uh, fixed organization to uh to change things for them plus there's so many small companies out there that it, it would be very challenging for them to enforce regulation across the board on that uh well now more so there's more a lot of small companies now more than ever yeah mm-hmm. yeah definitely definitely um uh, love game pass Personally, I think it's a great concept. Um, there's been a lot of titles that I've played that because I, I, I did pick it up. I think it's a great idea. And uh, if you want to draw people in for giveaways on your stream, a Game Pass uh, is an easy giveaway. Yeah, totally. Uh, it's, it's like 10 bucks for a month, so you can really toss a card out there and do that. Um, so that's great. Also, it brings people in. It also breathes fresh content into streaming, too, because... If you like, you, you, I've seen it a lot uh, this week. I believe it was this week and last week, really. Um, Absolver, you know, is now on the Game Pass, and I'm like, man, what is Absolver? You know, and there's tons of people playing it because it's free, and everyone else, like, I guess when you're, and I, I don't have an Xbox, you know, but I'm assuming that when you go over to Absolver on the Xbox and you like look at more info, you see like some of the streams on Mixer that are streaming Absolver. I'm pretty sure that integration is is easy. Now, my uh, my want would be Microsoft to truly start bridging this gap. You know, like Xbox is on my PC, 
uh, Mixer is on my PC. Why isn't Game Pass on my PC? You know, where I can uh, where I can spend ten bucks a month and just get a couple Xbox PC compatible titles. You know, like that would be that would be so cool. Well, it, it is. Like, what do you mean? I mean, State of Decay is on Game Pass, and you can play it on the PC. Yeah, but I mean, like, as an example, maybe maybe not maybe not uh, maybe not in that regard, but like maybe its own Game Pass. It's like on the PC side, you know, like Xbox is really, really pushing for itself to succeed, even though Microsoft Ooh. had a PC first, you know, and it'd just be nice if they had maybe they had like the PC game pass, the Xbox game pass, and then the PC and Xbox gamer pass, you know, where it's like $20 and you can have all of it, you know, or like maybe a la carte. I don't know. Something, something like that. But I can see that. I, I, I guess the, the, the problem with that particular, I mean, it's not necessarily a problem. It would definitely be a challenge. Um, you know, first of all, the the Game Pass currently does support basically that. It, it has, if you have Game Pass, there are games that are compatible with both PC and Xbox. Um, and so you, you can you can definitely do that. It's it's a limited pool compared to obviously like the. the larger library but there are games that are available um that you can you can pull down um state of decay was a great example of that um i have it both on xbox and on pc um and it was it's you know it was because i had game pass that i had that opportunity to have it on both and could play with the communities on both um obviously what you're more talking about is uh, like the the AAA titles, <laughs> no, not, not necessarily AAA. Uh, I mean, I'm, not necessarily. I'm I'm all about indie devs or or you know double A devs. You know ones that aren't quite AAA but aren't aren't four guys in a in a basement making a game. You know. Right. What about, yeah. what about D stuff? Does that work for you? Or are <laughs> you are you good with nine volts or? Yeah, it's a D it's a D cell game. Thanks, Curbs. <laughs> <laughs> all right um all right anything else guys before we uh wrap it up no i'm good man we we're good to be back on the uh the podcast thing yeah it's good to have you guys yeah. back it's nice to uh it's nice to be doing it again it's yeah, kind of lost, oh, it's kinda lost for a while there we didn't have a we didn't have a podcast to do for a few weeks there <laughs> yeah i was wandering the wilderness man I gotta figure out where to download this thing. <laughs> yeah, I'll, uh, I'll 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 shoot you a link after the uh, after the deal. Um, but yeah, so uh, so to wrap it up, what we do at the end is a streamer shout out. Um, so this time I'm gonna. Sh- uh, yeah. We completely ignored the fact that Activision's gone. We talked yeah. about it. We we <laughs> talked about the headline, and then you that guys talked about like, gone, like define gone. Split was Bungie, but that's yeah. So yeah. they're still their own thing. They're not gone. This <laughs> is fair enough. Well, being gone from that specific scenario, but I mean, Activision was Activision before Bungie was about. So. Activision was Activision before Bungie is about, and Activision is major, but Activision is in fact gone from that certain scenario. And so, so how about how about another another hand grenade? But I'm not going to talk about it. We can talk about it next time. Mm-hmm. But uh, I like you, you guys, you guys saw all the Blizzard guys leaving, right? No, you guys didn't see this. Like, Blizzard head honchos are all leaving. Yeah. Like, one went to Netflix, one went to uh, to Square, the thing that you like swipe your card at at like the little yeah. mom and pop shop. Um, yeah, so Blizzard's like on a massive exodus right now. So I wonder if Blizzard itself will exodus. You know, again. So it'll be, it'll be another happening. piece leaving. Yeah, that's I know. What I'm saying. But did anyone see Bungie leaving Activision? I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. See, that's what I'm saying. Oh, I see what you're saying. Like, like separating and yes, entities, basically. Yes. Oh, yeah. Activision, yeah, Blizzard. Uh, nah, nah, nah. Activision, you can go yeah. down bubble by yourself. Blizzard's gonna go over here. I mean, Blizzard's going down bubble hard. See, but like, this, like, um, that's why I said D4 was uh, too early to, for you guys to expect that. I. That wouldn't be why I would think D4 was too early to expect, but I think leaving Activision would be, for most people, or most things, their better bet. I don't know, man. 
They need they need new leadership though. That's for sure. I don't I don't know. Because when you, when you see Bungie and Activision paired together, it just makes you want to like run and hide <laughs> under your bed, you know, with like your bowl of ice cream and you know, just cry <laughs> because they've worked on a game. Here's the thing: oh I've never gosh. been a particular fan of Bungie's. Like I, I you know, I, I know I'm committing sacrilege yeah, when I'm saying this, but I've never okay, really Halo. liked Halo. Yeah, I played Halo like, too. I, I mean... loved Halo too, and that was it. Okay. Yeah, and, and so I mean, just the fact that you know the the split is occurring, I, I'm like, eh, you know, eh, I could do without either one. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, uh, culture. Yeah. I mean, Halo never. Halo was a buggy, glitchy game that mm-hmm. never set itself apart once it got competitors and it didn't make any attempt to move to the PC market until like 20 years after the game was released. Oh. And then, even then, it still only got a buggy, glitchy, doesn't even actually run on your computer port. Oh, it was Man, terrible. Curbs yeah, is really dropping that. the truth serum. You guys hear this? <laughs> it's true, <laughs> though. I'm not a Halo fan either. No, I gotta go. Yeah. Windows 10 has Cortana. That's all we should all really care about, yeah, right? Exactly. Like, that's what happened. That's the end little, game. Is Cortana? Little ring there. Yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> where's my Where's my AI character that I want? You know, like popping up on my screen. The the new Clippy. That was so uh, advertised nine years ago. What happened, man? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I, I got to go because uh, Curb said ice cream, and now the wife wants ice cream. So. There you go. That's how that works. Oh, All right, tell so, your wife I love her. So it's your fault. <laughs> now you have All right. So apple with ice cream on top. Thanks, <laughs> you guys. All right, real quick uh, before we go, a streamer shout out. Uh, this week it's going to be uh, any loot boxes. Um, some of the guys, uh, Curbs and Iman, know him from hanging around my stream. Uh, he was yeah, here for a minute he's earlier. Pretty cool, dude. That was a good. That was a good impression. So, um, yeah. So. Any loot boxes, uh, I'll drop a link if uh, if the bots don't freak out here. And this will also be in the show notes. Um, but uh, but yeah, this is this is any loot boxes. I don't have a shout out command. The bot died over Christmas, so I need to rebuild that. But um, but yeah, so any loot boxes. He uh, it's actually two m underscore any loot boxes. Uh, he's got an awesome uh, radio voice that doesn't work, Curbs. He's got an awesome radio voice and. Uh, and it's just really cool just hanging out with him. I don't know. He's been in, in voice chat with us a, a couple times, and it's just it's just a fun fun time. So definitely seems like a uh, a cool guy to hang out with. Um, definitely drop by a stream if you see him online. Uh, he's been playing Path of Exile on a couple other games, but uh, but he kind of plays all kinds of stuff. So uh, maybe you can find a new variety streamer to watch. Oh, there's any loot boxes. Yeah, he's not he's not feeling too hot right now. So if you don't see him online when when I say this, this is because he's recovering. So just give him some time. But um but yeah, we'll have a link to his stuff in the show notes and on YouTube and stuff. So thanks so much man for being an awesome part of the community and uh thanks again. Uh so with that um we're going to we're going to call it. I don't know if someone's going to like steal this from me at the end with some weird ska opera segment, but I'm going to try to say my piece. Um, so uh, if you're on anchor, uh, thanks for sharing this with your friends or with someone else that, you know, likes gaming or tech news and stuff like that. We appreciate it. Uh, if you're on YouTube, thanks for the likes, uh, the comments, the subscribes, all that stuff. Um, feel free to drop comments on whatever we talked about, or if you want something to be brought up in next week's uh, podcast, we can definitely talk about it. Um, just give me a link and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll bring it in. And if anyone wants to be on the podcast, just hit me up on DMS on Twitter. That's at pixels. Get me. And we'll, uh, we'll work out a time that, uh, that you can come on and be on the show and give us your opinions on stuff. And with that, thanks again to Woodbox world for hanging out with us. You rock dude. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. And, uh, and Curbs and Iman, as always, thanks, dudes. You guys are awesome. Yeah. Yeah, we are. <laughs> and I think Iman already went to go get ice cream. So this is where we're calling it, guys. Thanks so much. We'll see you oh, next hey, time. Hey, oh. hey, 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 Oh, there it is. There it is. I didn't get to see this earlier because I was insulted. But Woodbox, you got a beautiful face. <laughs> it's well-rounded. There yeah.
<laughs> Man, Curb's ending the stream Appreciate with a compliment. That. I don't even know what to, what to say right now. I'm shocked. I considered ending it with another really bad battery joke, but then I thought, eh, no, just go. Positivity, man. Look at this guy. There's still hope. I'm extremely negative, except right. for when it comes to attractive men. <laughs> All right, this is where we're calling it. Thanks so much, guys. We'll see you next time.